Are you look? That's why, that's why we don't go live. <laughs> Man, that's terrible. Are you looking for some awesome Catholic music to help lift up your soul in these times? Well, stay tuned because we're going to be interviewing Luke Spihar coming up next. Luke, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know, so Luke was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he began writing songs at the age of 16 and composed all of his music on his debut album at that time, which is insane in high school. Uh, in 2012, he uh, got to work with uh, the Grammy Award winning artist Ben Harper. He's produced multiple albums since then, including his newest one, Solace, which we're going to hear a little bit from. Super excited about. Uh, he married his wife, Elizabeth, and together as newlyweds, they toured the country when he was on tour. Uh, and they are blessed with three daughters who are about the same age as our kids, which is great. And uh, they live in St. Paul, Minnesota. So Luke, could you tell a little bit of our listeners about um, just your background and kind of your faith journey up till this point? Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, you know, so born and raised Catholic and uh, really a big turning point in my own faith journey was when I was a, a junior in high school, had this had one of the big, big conversion moments. Uh, actually, right before my first real performance, I had I was singing for a uh, kind of a talent show at in high school. And my dad uh, baited me. He said, you know, if you because he knew I played the guitar and sang, uh, but I didn't do it in front of anyone. So he's like, okay, I'll get you this guitar, but you have to play in the talent show. And I was oh. like, oh, I really want that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, I came out on stage and uh, I was so nervous. I said, I just kind of made this prayer. And at that time, I I wouldn't even really consider myself a deep believer. I just said, Lord, you got to show up. God, you have to come. And he just smoked me and, and I, I sang this song and it just... I just knew God was with me. And, and from that moment on, I, I uh, just was more passionate about pursuing God, wherever that meant. And for me, that meant into a uh, minor seminary experience in St. Paul, uh, uh, University of St. Thomas. So the um, St. John Vianney College Seminary was, was all my four years of, of university. And um, uh, yeah, highs and lows there, man. And it's such a journey. And any seminarian who's who's gone on to be a priest or has discerned out knows exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, uh, and I just, you know, I always say about that time, the Lord really gave me what I wanted, which was to go out and play music. I didn't even know that's what I wanted. So he showed me my, my heart's desire and then he gave it to me. And um, I hit the road, you know, right out of college. I'm like, okay, I'm just driving around the country and see what I see and sing where I can and and uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to keep doing music. I just didn't expect it. I had an album, and I recorded a second album when I was on the road. And uh, and just wherever I went, people wanted me back, and it and it just kind of kept going like that. So for the last ten years, that's kind of what I've been doing, and, and it's only increased. And oh, so I I don't know. I just it's always a surprise to me. <laughs> That is so good. That is such a beautiful story of just kind of walking and letting him show you one step at a time. Mm -hmm. I think far too often we like, we want the entire plan laid out for us. And yeah. yet like you didn't expect that plan to be laid out and where it's taking you this last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So how, how has your faith impacted your music? You know, so for the first, uh, well, really all of my albums have, have been, uh, through deep meditation or something like this. I mean, I really realized that, my, I mean, music was a way I pray. And especially mm -hmm. when I was younger, I didn't realize how much it was kind of correlated to that. You know, have these undulations of prayer life where you're like, I'm loving prayer, I'm feeling God. And then there's just the desert and you're like, I hate this. And <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean to say I hate God, but just it can be, <laughs> it can be difficult. It. You're just like, this is, this is laborious and and music can be like that a little bit uh, practicing can be like that. You're like, I'm not getting anywhere. Or, and, um, so, but I realized that my, my prayer life and my, my music were kind of writing a similar undulation and, and, uh, and then slowly being able to put words to what the Lord was speaking to me through that time of real, I guess it's meditation, you know, music kind of brings me into meditation and then I kind of verbalize what's going on in my heart. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's just kind of my prayers put to music. I, I've heard that said by other artists, but I feel that. And, uh, and certainly this latest project, you know, just, uh, uh, we're just songs, hymns and hymns and worship music that really got me through the 2020, you know, uh, lockdowns and different things like that. So that really steered, uh, the direction of that project, but all, all of my projects have really been steered by, uh, what the Lord was doing in my life at that time. And even when I listen back to them, I go, wow, that was a very honest, uh, that was an honest song. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not there anymore, you know, but that was just a honest moment of prayer or maybe even theologically incorrect. It, it was just what I was, yeah, what was going on in me and what, how I understood it, whether that was right or wrong. It was just, I was just kind of honestly saying, this is, this is where I'm at. Yeah. That, I, I think that's such a, a beautiful place to come from, to be able to look back. You know, a lot of times when you're producing content, you know, you look back and you're just like, oh man, like, I can't believe, you know, I said that or did this or, you know, but, um, I think when, when you produce that type of stuff from, from the place of the heart, and then you can look back and say that, like, that's where I was at, you know, that's where the Lord was taking me. That's what was on my heart. And so you'll kind of always have that, uh, to be able to look back on. Yeah. So and for you, the quote, St. Augustine, I uh, to sing is to pray twice. Mm. I like literally you're taking your prayer and you're turning it into music. And that is like mm, literally yeah. you praying that <laughs> twice. And mm. uh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful way. Mm -hmm. So can it. you tell us a little bit about this new project, yeah. uh, which I think is called Solace? Yeah. And kind of where that name came from, where yeah. the songs are. Yeah. So Solace, um, you know, for me, actually the, 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 kind of initial inspirations for solace was even pre COVID. Actually, if you remember when you think before COVID, if you'd ask people, you know, what's going on in your life, how's your life? Everyone was just like, it's so crazy. It's so busy. It's slammed, you know, it's full, you know, all these different slang words yeah. for like, we're going crazy. And, uh, you know, it, it was just, we were coming off the heels of the Trump Hillary election and just, you could just feel a, a shift in energy, I think in the country and in the faith. And it was just like, we need to just, I felt like we just need to like calm down a little bit. You know, yeah. we need to reconnect to things that are true and beautiful. And, um, so I was talking to the producer who ended up producing, um, solace. His name is Jake Armerding. And, and we had, we were kind of mulling over the idea pre lockdown of just, we need to just reconnect to these beautiful old truths and hymns that have said it better than I can write. Mm -hmm. it. And, uh, uh, so we were kind of mulling over different songs and then, um, one thing led to another. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't really pursue the idea until the lockdown. I'm like, Whoa, we have, we have some time. Yeah. He had a garage studio set up. So we literally recorded the album in his garage, which think primitive. It's like, uh, you know, it's not an insulated garage. So we were just at the, mercy of the elements and and that was just f funny at times and so frustrating at other you know, just like <laughs> get there and it just rains on us and it's just too loud <laughs> you know too loud and or it'd be too hot you know so a lot of the sessions happened between 6 and 9 a.m because by 10 a.m it's just too hot yeah on the hot days we had like crickets in the garage we couldn't <laughs> find them so we had to call off the session just one thing after another and it's like this is just what is happening here and we have, I have another clip uh, that I recorded of, of a, we we just got set. We're all pumped. I'm feeling great. And garbage trucks pull into the alley and just had this like convention. And I'm like, I don't get it. So he's from the East Coast. He goes out there. He's like, would you leave? Please leave. And these guys are like, can we do our jobs? Anyway, um, it was just one thing after another. So, but it was just a collection of my favorite hymns from my time in seminary. And then just from years of just needing music to recenter me on the Lord and, and these deeper truths that um, kind of hold us when, you know, there's so much turmoil. And um, those, so that the collection of songs on Solace is, is really my favorites. There are a number of my favorites uh, and I have more, but it was just like, this is a good start. And um, I say I definitely kind of Luke Spihard, the music, you know, is just people listen and go, that's, yeah, I haven't heard that song like that. I'm like, that's just the way I like to play it. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. It's such a funny story. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us? What maybe a day in the life of a musician is like, or your schedule? I mean, I I guess probably things are different now that um, COVID's kind of 
breaking up and you know people are allowed to do concerts and stuff but yeah. what yeah what does it look like to be a musician right now yeah right now is such an interesting time you're right i mean it's just if you notice the biggest acts are really booking 2022 i mean there's concerts mm -hmm. certainly happening but a lot of people are it seems like pushing the, the big tours out into europe like in 2022 um and i've had the gift of really of being able to really sing and, and minister to the Catholic church a lot, you know, just awesome. travel around the country a lot, just previously to COVID. And what I'm experiencing right now is just a deep hunger um, for more of that connection and more of that music. And so I'm kind of getting a jump on it earlier than maybe the, the really like my like A-listers or something like that. And I'm really grateful for that. And that looks like, you know, maybe backyard concerts or I just did a festival outside or, whatever, if a parish is comfortable with having a, a concert inside. So right now it's just kind of regrouping and getting a feel for who's excited about doing more events. And then it's just, I don't know, ministering where we can, I guess, you know, just making more music and, and laying low, you know, COVID for me through this time, you know, pushed all of us into family life. Like we'd never experienced, you know, you really learn a lot about yourself. I'm, I'm finding myself really trying to guard that still, you know, like it's interesting because yeah. at first I was like, wow, this is a lot of family. Uh, and then I was like, this is, I'm so, I, I want them around me more than ever. So, so mm -hmm. now that, you know, what does it look like? We're, we're like looking for a motor home, you know, is that got to do it together? Ah, that's and, awesome. Uh, just kind of <laughs> travel as a, as a, as a family. And we did anyway, you know, we travel out of a minivan. We've got a minivan and kind of going, going where that will allow, but <laughs> That'd be the next, the next step. Maybe a yeah. little more comfortable than the minute. I, yeah, I think my I wife. Think would, yeah. Three kids. <laughs> three kids. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think that's something that's really relatable uh, to appears definitely to us. I mean, even just recently, you know, we've been, we just had a scheduled meeting this morning where it's like, oh, you know, it just seems there was so much. Um, Good white space. Yeah. Right. Like, and and. We're, it's so easy in our, our society and our life today to just be like, oh yeah, yeah, we can do that. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And all of a sudden everything starts piling up and then you don't leave any room for God. And that's such a tragedy. Yeah. yeah. So no, I think that's so true. And I, I think for us getting on the road oftentimes is that relief as as mm -hmm. like laborious and, and crazy as a road trip is, you know, it's not a vacation, it's that family trip. There's a real distinction there. All families <laughs> really get it. But it does give you that space to like maybe listen to Bible in a year or something like yeah. this, or, uh, you know, a podcast that you've been kind of got question that you've been trying to, to sort out or, you know, it gives you that space to really reflect and think. And, and so I'm always grateful for, for, um, for once we can actually hit the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really, it's a beautiful way to look at being on the road and mm -hmm. on tour to have that space, which in my mind, like you're like going places and places and places, but yet how there's actually is potentially some breaks in there. Yeah. That's interesting. I, uh, man, maybe just a, a slight change in gears, but I'm curious, how did your time in seminary, um, have you seen fruits from that, like in your vocation, uh, in the married life? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think that well, <laughs> and again, guys who have gone through seminary would, would laugh at this. I mean, when you discern seminary, it's very different. Or you, <laughs> you know, like God's not really a moving target, you know. And uh, so you can kind of go down to the chapel and yell it out with God sometimes. And, <laughs> and it doesn't matter the time of night or God's mood, um, yeah. <laughs> which, which changes a lot. <laughs> so... so you know, when you get into a, a relationship with a person, you know, you, you have to be mindful of all these things. And so that was a learning curve, you know, and um, but, you know, I think I think some of the things that I'm most grateful for from my seminary time is first off, I mean, and maybe primarily I didn't I don't have any questions. I, I knew that I I pursued that yeah. um, possibility and put myself as much as I could right in the way of God to say, hey, if this is your call, call me. I'm here and call me. And if it's not your call, like, light me up for your will. I'll go wherever it yeah. is. And he, like, that's what he did. You know, he lit me up for this music ministry and I, I went and I haven't stopped. And it's, it's, I don't have questions about it. So there's a yeah. deep, a deep peace that I think affects my family life a lot um, and my marriage. And it's just, there's not that, I'm not haunted by that question at all. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I think too, you know, like with uh, seminary gives you a real deep kind of foundation, um, both with discipline. There was a six o'clock holy hour, seven o'clock mass every day in my four years there. And it really gets you in the habit of uh, the sacraments and, and the grace that's there. And it also kind of uh, demystifies the priesthood a little bit in that way to where, you know, maybe confession was a little scary before, but not when, you know, you're just surrounded by priests and you see their human side and the gift of their spiritual side. And so a lot of that uh, was a great gift to me. And, uh, yeah, I think that just the the kind of, like, I, I guess the last thing I would say is this time in seminary is, you, again, you're, you're around priests, formators, spiritual directors who are kind of digging into your life. And one of the great fruits, I think, of that seminary time is you're around people who are, you know, invested in your life, digging into your life. You're allowing people to to look at your life. And and, um, and there's just so much growth that can come from that. And just, yeah. you know, I need I need fellowship and brotherhood. And, and later in my life, kind of building healthy relationships with women and just, you know, just like, and that, that gift of, fem- you know, sisterhood, you know, a family, I don't know how you exactly say that, but just learning how to let people into your life in such a, a powerful way was really, it's been important to me. So, um, so yeah, in those ways, I think the seminary has been the most helpful uh, going into family life. But family life is its own, you know, you guys know this, like nothing prepares you. You just, I mean, you can kind of be prepared a little bit, like you need to know the Lord and that helps so much, but you know, it's just, it's, it's that adventure that you're on with the Lord and your spouse that, that is so unique to you. Never in the history of the world has that happened, you know? So it's like, there's only so much people can say, cause it is the first time in the history of the world, this is going on. Speaking of family, uh, what is it like to bring your family on tour with you? You know, how do you live out the Catholic faith while you're traveling around the country? What does that look like on a kind of day-to-day level? I have this great picture of of us wheeling like a like a bag dolly or something like that uh, into a, in a hotel room. My two oldest are sitting on the top of this mountain of bags, two guitars, just like and they're going off of either side of the dolly or like, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, <laughs> we are not subtle. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could just get in there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's uh it's it can it can it's exhausting but it's a blast you know there's these moments where the 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 clouds part for a moment it's just there's nothing uh par- nothing parallels it and so and again the gift being able to to minister and and pray and sing with and sing to so many parishes that oftentimes our our um sacramental life is is kind of built in you know it's like you're there for the weekend anyway maybe a parish yeah. mission or something like that and so the family just joins in uh for those pieces but yeah, it's it's always interesting having them kind of close to the stage or wherever I'm singing because they will come on there, you know, they'll run up there and jump there and touch <laughs> the microphones and so it is it's definitely an adventure. I mean, and what makes it possible? I always say this is my wife is the hero in our story. There's just no question. And when you you look at the fruit of a partnership and and particularly Drew, I'm sure you'd agree, but you just uh I think the gift of motherhood and and a wife who's behind your mission and, and, and not just like behind it, but so much a part of it. it yeah. It's nothing. It's so critical and, and it's so possible for you both to really, you know, realize your dreams together. I think that's a thing is like, we yeah. both had a dream and it manifested its way in music. And I'm so grateful that that was the case. Oh, I think that's, it's beautiful. And I love the idea of kind of creating your life and like your work around your family, instead of it being like, here's my work box and here's my family box. And like, I travel out and I go and sing and I do praise and I do worship and I like do minister to people, but then like coming home and kind of having this like alternative life there. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful to see the two be able to become one. I I, like, we love working together in ministry. Mm -hmm. It's by far like our favorite part is that we get to do it together yeah. uh, at this phase. We've done a lot of like self projects and they just have not bared half the fruit <laughs> um, that yeah. working together, being, being together through it. Uh, and so I think it's cool to hear of another, another couple that is sharing the dream 
and mm. figuring out how to do it together. Now, you guys are such a beautiful witness of that. I mean, it's inspiring for, you know, anyone looking on to go, hey, you know, you you can do this together and it's not even, you can, it's like better, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are such a great witness of that. No, it's it's so awesome to be able to, t to talk to guys like you that are in ministry and, and involving your family. And I think just the companionship in the realness of it's awesome. It's hard. It's messy. It, you know, like, it's dude, it's just, yeah, you know, like we are just in the trenches mm -hmm. fighting for the Lord and, mm -hmm. and that's okay. It's not, we don't have this picture perfect family, mm -hmm. um, this picture perfect life. Like we struggle, we sin, we're trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just beautiful to, to have other friends that are there just <laughs> in the battle with you. Yeah. yeah. And how encouraged we are through our sacrament, through our marriage and how yeah. not only the friend, like have the friends of the communion, but then also like our spouse to go back to in those moments. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, there's nothing like that. And that's something we've been talking a lot about lately. My wife and I is just the gift of, of folks to kind of be in the trenches with. And, you yeah. know, there's just moments where, you know, you have a couple over the neighborhood we live in has, you know, there's um, a few houses that have at least at least seven kids. It's such a gift to watch people heroically um, just live out family life and all that it is, all that it is, you know, and, and just the gift of life and watching. And then sometimes, you know, you just get together and you just sit down at a table and you're just quiet because it's, that's, you know, you just silently kind of sit there and be, be there together. And I love that. I love that companionship and, and the gift of community. So you're so right. It's a huge, uh, uh, it's a huge gift to know more people who are walking the path with you and, uh, and to be inspired by folks like you and and other um, ministers who've gone before, and yeah, I'm I'm built up. <laughs> well, we would love to hear some music. We yeah, if you're willing to play. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. So I was, I was thinking, uh, just from this new album, one song that has just kind of led the charge um, is a song called "How Can I Keep from Singing." It's a it's such a old classic hymn yeah and um uh and again for for me and through this time you know there's been a lot of big questions and and for a lot of musicians and, and just a lot of people i don't mean to kind of single myself out but for me personally it's been a challenging challenging year and a half yeah, yeah. and um and through it all though you go lord you like I'm putting my trust and hope that you have a way forward for us all. And, and, and in that I can still make a choice to praise you and to acknowledge you as God through all this. And I, that's what I love about this song. Um, you know, through all the tumult and the strife, like it's the Lord is still there. How can I keep from singing my, this song of praise? And so and maybe I'll, I'll leave you with this song as a, as a song of gratitude for the way the Lord is still leading us. My life flows on in endless song Although earth lamentation
Well, I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin, and I see the blue above it. And day by day, this pathway smooths. Since first I learned to love it, the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart. A fountain ever spring. No things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from seeing? My storm can shake my most bone. While to that rock I'm bringing. Since Christ is Lord of Well, Luke, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Oh, where can people find out more about you, about your music? Just yeah. Going on? yeah. Yeah. So you can find me at my my website's just lukespehar.com, S P E H A R, Spihar. People wonder how you pronounce that. And it's just how it looks, Spihar. <laughs> but no, it doesn't look that way. And I've heard every version. Um, uh, and then. Yeah, another w great way to support us is we just started a Patreon account, and that's just that's Patreon awesome. a backslash Luke Spihar, and we would love any support that way. That would be wonderful. Uh, you can find my kind of touring website there on my website, again, LukeSpihar.com. Uh, we're on everywhere you listen to music and, and likes and shares and and uh, and all the other ways that you, you do social media is a great gift. So, yeah. That's so good. Well, we will leave links to all of those in the description. Luke, again, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we're praying for you and for your family um, and for your ministry and your music. Thank you for uh, being so open to the Lord's will. Uh, and it's awesome to see where God has taken you. And to yeah. share those gifts. Yes. Drew and Katie, thank you so much for having me on. And, and uh, yeah, thank you for the great work you're doing. For all of our listeners, definitely check out all of Luke's stuff. And just know that here at Catholic Link, we're praying for you until next time. God bless.